Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Carl D'Souza. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Hey, what's up guys? So in this video, we're going to take a look at how to run Power Automate flows from within Dynamics 365 and model-driven applications. Let's do it. All right, guys, so let's do this. So the first thing we want to do is let's jump into Dynamics 365 and let's take a look at what we can see here, right? So I'm going to open up a web browser and just go to my AD365 environment. And let's go over to Accounts. All right, so we're now in the Accounts in Dynamics 365 and we see we have this Flow button here. So if we click on this Flow button, uh, we see under Manage, we have two options. We have Create a Flow and See uh, Your Flows. And we actually have a, a workflow as well here from before, okay? So what we want to do is create a new flow. So let's click Create a Flow. And this will take us over to Power Automate. Um, so you can see in the URL here, it's flow.microsoft.com. So this is where you typically create these flows, um, like any other type of uh, Microsoft flow in Power Automate. Um, so it's sort of automatically brought us over. And we can see here that we have a common data service button um, and then a custom action, all right? So if we click continue, this is gonna take us to the Power Automate um, canvas for building Microsoft Flows. And from here, we'll be able to, to build out our flow for Dynamics 365, okay? So the first uh, um, trigger that we see here is when a record is selected, okay? So what this means is when a record is selected in Dynamics 365, we can go ahead and perform a whole bunch of actions, right? Um, and in our case, it's defaulted to the environment as default, and the entity name is uh, automatically brought over as well, and that's set to accounts, okay? So when an account is selected in our environment, what do we want to do, okay? So let's click on next step, and let's do something really simple. Um, what we can do is we will create a uh, contact, okay? So we can see here, if we select uh, the common data service connector again, um, then we have a whole bunch of actions that we can do for when this record is selected. And what we want to do is we want to create a new record. And this time we want to create a contact record. Okay, so our environment um, we can select here. It's pulling down our D365 environments. And for the entity name, we're going to search for contacts. These are the fields for contacts. Um, I'm going to enter a last name and um, What's going to be interesting is I'm, I'm going to set the last name um, using the record that was selected. So I'm just going to put here test four, and then I'll actually select the account name of what was actually selected above here in the uh, when a record was selected. Okay, so we'll get a new we'll get a new account uh, contact created. Sorry, we'll get a new contact created that will have this name test four in the account name, and then we'll know that it's been um, that our flow has run successfully. Okay. So I'm going to click Save here, and um, we can see it's saved. And if I um, click back, we can just confirm, and you'll get this message here that it has been saved. You can double, triple check your saving uh, to make sure that it's saved. Um, but I know that this one's saving. Um, you can see here the status is on uh, for this flow, so we're actually uh, ready to go ahead and use it, right? So if I click on Accounts, um, if I click on Flow here, so our flow hasn't appeared yet, um, so I'm just going to refresh this page and it should pull down um, the new flow in the list. Okay, so if I select flow, um, then we do see we have this new flow here, right? And if I actually selected it, um, it's not going to do anything because I haven't actually uh, selected a record, right? So if I go into, for example, um, this fourth coffee sample, so if I open this record, so we have this flow in the top right once again. Um, and if I click to run it now, then uh, we see here we get this pop-up that says common data service button. And we can see the permissions that it's requiring common data service. So let's go ahead and click continue and run flow. And we can see that the flow has started running, right? Um, we get to monitor this by going to the uh, Flow Runs page. So if I click on this link, it's actually going to take us back to flow.microsoft.com. And you know, if you use uh, Microsoft Flow often, you'll be very familiar with this page. It just shows a list of all the previous runs um, that your Flow has done, right? So we can see this one is a status of succeeded. And if I click into it, 
uh, we can see that the um, we have the two green checkboxes, which, which means that uh, each of these actions and triggers has run successfully, right? And if I expand this create a new record, we can just get a little more information. We can see here that the uh, last name created for this contact is in fact uh, test four and then the fourth coffee sample company, right? Um, so that's the exact uh, format that we wanted for our last name to kind of give us a clue as to, you know, this is the contact that we created, right? So if I actually went back into D365 and let's just get out of the screen here and go to contacts, um, you know, if we do a quick search for this contact, um, we'll be able to see that um, this contact has been created now. So if I search for a fourth, for example, like so, then we can see here it is test for fourth copy, right? So our flow ran successfully. All we had to do was uh, select an account and uh, click to run the flow. And uh, that's it. It's um, Microsoft Flow uh, picks up what we're doing, um, transfers control over to the flow application, which then goes ahead and does whatever we tell it to. And uh, you know we can uh, monitor that flow and uh, also run it from D365 or a model-driven power app. Awesome, right? So, so what if we wanted to create this flow from the um, Microsoft Flow side instead of doing it from the Dynamics 365 side, right? So let's take a look at how to do that. Um, I'm just going to open a new tab here and we'll go to flow.microsoft.com. And let's go ahead and create a new flow. Um, you know, of course, make sure you're in the correct environment when you're creating these flows. I will create a new flow and I'm going to create a, a instant flow here. So this is the flow that I can basically run whenever I want. Okay. Um, I will select here, skip. Um, I don't really care about um, setting the name or uh, how it's going to be triggered just yet. Um, but so this brings me to the um, designer for the flow. Um, so what I want to do here is search for common data service. And you can see here that is one of the top connectors that I have um, already in my list because I tend to use it a lot. So I'm going to click common data service and we have our triggers. Um, here I will select uh, when a record is selected. Okay. So that was the same default trigger that was um, that, that had been provided to us when we created our flow starting from the Dynamics 365 side. So in this case, I'm going to um, select it in the same way and you'll see that it's um, going to uh, give us the same result, okay? So um, when I do that, I can select the environment that I want this um, trigger to run on. I will select the default environment and the entity name. So same deal, um, you can type in whichever entity you want to run this flow on, okay? So because I'm selecting accounts here, this will run on the account entity. And so I'm basically telling it to do the same thing now, right? What, you know, let's, let's go ahead and create a new step. And I'll do something very similar. Um, I'll create a new record and I'll create a new account, uh, sorry, a new contact again. And this time I'll just give it a slightly different name, okay? So the environment, um, same deal. I'm gonna select the same environment uh, for Dynamics 365. Uh, the entity name, I will type in contacts. So there it is, once it's selected, it'll uh, kind of figure itself out. Um, and then for the last name, uh, in this case, I'm just gonna put test two uh, for and then use the account name again, right? So very similar test. Um, you know, in the first the first time we did this, we called it test four, and then the account name. This time it's test two, just so that we know that we have an updated flow running, right? So I will click save, and um, and then this will uh, save the flow, and we can see here we have a name for the flow. That's cool, um, and uh, you know that's it. So let's go back to D three sixty five and see what's going on. If I click accounts here um, and I'm going to select an account, this time Alpine Ski House, let's try this one. And so now I'm going to uh, flow and you may need to hit F5 um, just to ensure that this appears in the list. Um, sometimes it doesn't show, but if you refresh the page, I find it shows up. Um, we'll give it a few seconds and then it'll show up. So in this case, we have our new flow. Um, you know, again, that's the default name. You can call it something a little better, but Let's just go ahead and select it to run it and we'll get the same uh, pop-up here um, and we can see here that so there's the flow name 
waiting for the uh, text to come through. There's the text. It's going to give us the permissions. Great. Uh, let's hit con click continue, and then we'll click run flow to get this flow to run. That's it. It's done. Uh, we can go over to the flow runs page as well, uh, again, and let's just confirm what's happened. Um, you know, if we get the green checkboxes, then um, we know it's run, and we'll just head back over to Dynamics, and we'll um, ensure that it's uh, that it's successful, right? So you can see it succeeded anyway. Um, you know, this is a pretty simple flow. We wouldn't expect this one to break. Um, you know, but it looks good. Um, a user wouldn't really need to come in here and check all any of this. Uh, you know, we would expect them to, um, you know, get a pretty quick success and then be able to see the results. Um, you know, and if there's any problems in, on the flow side, then the builder of the flow would ideally have some kind of um, mechanism to, uh, you know, help troubleshoot or correct the error. Okay, so if we head over to contacts. Um, you know, we ran this on Alpine Ski House. So if I just search for Alpine, right, um, using the wildcards there so that we get a big set of results, uh, we can see test two for Alpine Ski House, right? So that's that's correct. We called it test two for our second flow. It's run successfully. Awesome. So that's it. That's how you get your flows to appear in Dynamics 365 so that you can use them through the user interface like that. Um, but just a couple of things to uh, end on here, right? So. Um, you know, as we mentioned, um, you know, when you do it this way um, and, uh, you know, to get this to appear in this list, you'll want to use the uh, selected records trigger from the Power uh, Automate side, okay? So if we jump back into Power Automate, um, you know, this thing here, when a record is selected, that's the key that you'll want to use um, to get that to appear in the D365 side. Um, if you, um, and notice also that we've created these as instant flows, right? Um, I'm going to jump out of this. But uh, if we click create here, there's, you know, different types of flows that we can create, right? Um, including the uh, automated flows that happen when some event happens um, and the schedule flows that happen when uh, you tell them you want them to run, right? So we created the instant flow, which means like we're going to tell it when we want it to run. And, um, you know, one of the ways that we can tell it that is through D365 on that uh, flow button um, that appears in that drop-down list, right? So if we created an automated flow, let's just see what happens, right? Um, so when you click on automated flow, you get the option to, um, to uh, you know, enter this information, but let's just click skip. And this takes us to the flow designer, and then we have like a trigger, right? So if we go to the uh, Common Data Service Connector um, and select it, then we'll see here that these are the, um, the actions, right? Uh, sorry, the triggers. So if we um, selected when a record is selected, then yes, we'll get it to appear in our list on D365. But if we wanted this to run when it's uh, created, updated, or deleted, right, then these triggers are not going to... Um, enable the flow to appear on the D365 side because it's all going to happen under the cover anyway, right? So if someone, if I did, uh, you know, select when a record is created, then um, when a record is created in Dynamics 365, this flow is going to run. So there's nothing else that I need to do, right? Um, so that that kind of makes sense as to why you wouldn't see it in um, a list on uh, in a dropdown list, right? Um, and then same deal with the, um, you know, if I jump out of this, uh, let's exit this one. And then if I click on the schedule flow, same thing's happening here. If I, um, you know, tell it I want it to run um, at this particular time, then there's, uh, you know, no, then there's no reason that I would want to click, uh, you know, start now from a um, from a perspective of Dynamics 365, right? Because it's already enabled, right? It's either enabled to run at the time or it's not, right? And that's from the flow side. So, um, so that's the key there. Uh, you'll want to use um, when a record is selected to get it to appear in D365. Um, and then you can go off and do a whole bunch of stuff, right? There's no, uh, you know, you're only limited by uh, what Microsoft Flow can do and the connectors and the actions that are available. So this one's a nice feature. It shows the Power Platform coming together. We have Power Automate, we have Power Apps. Um, and in this case, Dynamics 365, which is a model-driven Power App, um, you know, what's a really cool feature is to be able to be a user and within one of these applications, such as D365 or Power Apps, be able to select a record or a list of records 
and then run a Microsoft Flow uh, directly from the user interface. So that's it guys. Don't forget to subscribe and check out my blog at carldesouza.com. Thanks.